Hey guys, welcome to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel and in this episode I want to show you the 20 ball python hatchlings that I'll have available for sale at the next reptile show. And the next show is coming up in just one week and that is Repticon March 9th and 10th 2019 in Aurora, Colorado at the Arapahoe County Fairgrounds. Hope to see you there. And another thing I want to cover is the so-called reptile show police. I actually got busted on the last show and I want to tell you what my violation was and explain all the details. So at the last reptile show I was busted by the so-called reptile police and there's three people that really are policing the animals that I know of and number one first and foremost is the people that set up the reptile show. They go around and look at all the animals make sure the animals are healthy and especially if you have snake mites they will boot you out of the show if they see any mites at all. Let me tell you if I was to go to the show with all my snakes and I saw any snake mites I'd pack my stuff up and just take off because I definitely don't want snake mites here in my my reptile room they're really difficult to get rid of I've had them before it took me months to actually get rid of my my mite problem that was when I first started and I didn't really know what I was doing and before I knew it my whole room was infested and let me tell you you don't want to have to deal with snake mites in a big room like this the second group of people People that I've seen policing the reptile shows are hired veterinarians and I actually talked to one of these veterinarians she had a little table a booth set up at the show and she, she said she went around to every table made sure all the animals were healthy and you're talking about you know a knowledgeable veterinarian she was actually helping me with some of my animals <laughs> I was kind of showing her some of my issues and my problems we were working through them and she she actually helped me on quite a few of my animals which was pretty cool but the third group of people that are hired to police the reptile shows that would be the Department of Agriculture which really surprised me and what I did the first day on the show I sold a whole bunch of snakes I, I think I sold pretty much all my snakes I only had maybe a dozen left in my display case and, and I had 60 slots and only about a dozen left so I started thinking well what can I do to fill all these slots so on the second day I actually came home got a bunch of snakes went back to the show and these snakes were my holdbacks and what I did is as I took my holdbacks and I put them in the display and they were they're really tight in the display case they really didn't have enough room and the dividers weren't removable and that was the big problem and she came over and said hey those snakes they don't have enough room in there and and I was pretty much stuck it was either pack up and leave and she didn't find me she didn't kick me out she just told me that hey these snakes don't have enough room and that really motivated me to get new display cases so for this upcoming show I'm gonna have different display cases with more room for the snakes and you'll see it spreads out my snakes gives them a lot more room especially for these holdbacks so I'm gonna go through all these hatchlings and show you one by one each snake and we'll see what each one looks like okay so first up is this big beautiful female bamboo this is just a straight bamboo and she has a really reduced pattern this is one of my holdbacks and originally I wasn't gonna sell this girl and I decided to actually put her up for sale and if she sells you know for the right price uh, that's fine and, and actually if she doesn't sell I'll definitely keep this one as a breeder she's a really stunning looking snake Here's another one of my holdbacks that I decided to put up for sale at the show if you're interested. This is actually my female uh, Lemon Blast Scaleless Headball Python. She is a real stunner. And if you can see, she's a really high expression scaleless head. She is beautiful. And she's been, I don't know, I have two of them that are ex almost exactly the same. And it seems like they were really picky eaters lately. They were, they were just really pounding down the, the rats and the mice. And all of a sudden they, they hit a wall. These are like the first ones to hit a wall. But they're still doing really good. And they're females. So hopefully in a couple years to breed these, you'd get actually totally scaleless if you bred it back with a scaleless head. 
So here is a scaleless head female, 50% head caramel albino, and she is getting some pretty good weight to her. She's eating really well, and really my hope was to actually breed this with the male, and hopefully if, if they're both het caramel albino, I could actually get a totally scaleless caramel albino ball python, which would be really incredible. But um, definitely going to have these at the show if you're interested. Uh, <laughs> if they don't sell again, I'll definitely keep these as holdbacks. Here is my Lemon Blast Bamboo Female. <laughs> really deep in shed. And this is actually what I originally named the King Tut. And then I found later on that was actually a female. <laughs> I was going to use this as a breeder to, to actually uh, pair up with a bunch of my snakes next year. And I found that I actually made a mistake on the gender when I I probed it for a second time when it was a little bit bigger and that's when I found uh, basically you need to make sure you do a really good job probing your snakes it's really easy to make a mistake and if this doesn't sell I'll definitely keep it but you know the female takes a little bit longer but of course with the males you could breed it with you know a lot of my normals and stuff right away for the females this would be kind of more of a long term I'd say this is probably two years away from being able to breed so here's a male scaleless head. This is a pretty much a lower expression scaleless head. Just doesn't doesn't have that many scales missing from the head. And this said actually this is what I was intending to pair with the other female scaleless head. This is 50% head caramel albino as well. This is my female pastel scaleless head. She's a beauty. She's really bright. And it seems like the scaleless head really makes the pastel really pop. I don't know if just the single scaleless head maybe thins out the scales a little bit to make the color pop a little bit. But this pattern, this repeating pattern is really interesting. She's a really stunning snake. This is definitely it'll be at the it'll definitely be at the show, but if it doesn't sell, I'll be glad to hold on to this girl. So here's another female scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino, and this is actually one of the ones I was gonna originally sell at the shows. You can tell it's a little bit smaller. I've been feeding these a little bit smaller meals, and I'm, I'm coming to find out that if you feed them big meals and feed them pretty heavy, that they don't really fit in the display cases. So that's another reason I think why breeders really kind of you know moderate the food when they're feeding them before the shows just so they don't outgrow the display cases but this will definitely be at the show as well so this is my male pastel calico bamboo and he is probably almost up to size to breed he's a really stunning snake and I've actually only ever seen one of these for sale on morph market and honestly I don't think it had the pastel in it because it doesn't look anything like this it almost looks like this without the pastel so I think this this is pretty much a world's first. I don't, I've never actually seen one like this other than this snake. It's really impressive. And if this doesn't sell, I'm definitely going to use it as a breeder. He is a stunner. Really beautiful snake. So here's essentially the same snake with the pastel stripped away. So this doesn't have any pastel in it at all. And it almost fools you because it looks pretty yellow, but you compare it to the one with the pastel and you can definitely tell that there's no pastel in here. And this is also a male. It would make a really nice breeder. He is really stunning. Let's take a look at his head. I love the heads and the necks on these bamboos. These are awesome. Beautiful snake. So here is a female lesser bamboo, and I actually have two of these, a male and a female. And if you could actually breed them both together, you would get a combination of super lessers, super bamboos, and bamboo lessers. And I think you could tell the bamboo lessers apart because they have just a little bit of yellow coming in along the ridge here. But um, I don't know if you could tell the difference between a Super Bamboo and a Super Lesser. Both would be blue-eyed, leucistic, completely white snakes. And for some reason you mix the two together and you get just a little bit of that yellow coming in. Okay, so this is a female, 50% head pied, and I'm pretty sure by the belly tracks and by the the <laughs> kind of the tracks coming up the sides that it's, I can always guarantee this is 100% head pied. And there's someone that actually wanted to buy this snake. I don't normally hold snakes for sale, 
but um, they, they were really uh, adamant about it. I'll actually hold this for maybe an hour when we open the doors and uh, you can come and pick up the snake. So here is the other female lemon blast scaleless head and these are really high expression scaleless head ball pythons. If you can see that really high expression scaleless head there. She is a beauty. She looks awesome. And she's got some pretty good weight on her. And the funny thing about it is both these lemon blasts kind of went off food almost exactly at the same time. And they almost weigh exactly the same. It's really weird. But it seems like all my other snakes are still eating really well. And these just kind of decided to get a little bit picky. But, you know, with ball pythons, you just never know. So here is my male lesser bamboo, and it's these are really powerful breeders. Both of the blue-eyed leucistics, these are actually allelic combos. So if you actually bred this to normal, you get half lessers and half bamboos. You wouldn't get any normals at all, which would be pretty cool. And you actually you wouldn't get any of these white snakes <laughs> out of a, a pairing it with a normal either, because uh, you'd only get one copy of the gene. It acts like a super. So here is a male pastel bamboo, really stunning looking snake. It's interesting, most of the pastel bamboos have more pattern on the side. This one doesn't quite have as much pattern as some. The pattern's really variable on a lot of these bamboos. And it seems like if you mix it with the pastel, it usually really pops out the pattern. And this seems like an exception. Uh, but you can definitely tell it has pastel because of the lighter color in the head. The, the regular bamboos have a darker head. It's a really beautiful snake. Here's another male scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino. And this is actually, I had a few of these I was selling at the show. This is not one of my holdbacks, so it's a little bit smaller. But it still has a fairly high expression scaleless head. And when I was actually buying scaleless head ball pythons, my very first ones, uh, I was actually, uh, <laughs> there's, they're basically priced for more expensive, you'd, you'd actually pay more if it was a high expression scaleless head with more scales missing from the head versus a low expression where you couldn't hardly see any scales. And I don't really know if that's the case anymore. Scaleless heads have really come down in price and a lot of things have changed. I pretty much set all these pretty much at the same price regardless of, a, of a, if it's high expression or low expression. Here's another male pastel bamboo and this thing is really high contrast. It's really stunning and it's kind of interesting. It almost looks like it has kind of dirty sides on it a little bit but the top is really seems like it has a lot more white next to this uh, this darker color it seems like it's just a little more intense you can definitely tell it's a pastel bamboo because of the of the the lighter head compared to a regular bamboo Here's another male scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino, and this guy has got some really good weight to him. If you keep, if he keeps eating like he is, he'll definitely be ready to breed next year. And keep in mind, if you pair a scaleless head, even with a normal, half the babies come out scaleless head. So here's just a straight female bamboo, and this is by far one of the darkest bamboos that I've ever seen. She's a little bit smaller because she was a little bit finicky at the, at the beginning to start eating, and now she'll take anything. I've been doing rats and mice. She's perfectly fine. Uh, she's she's over the hump. Usually the, the really finicky part, trying to get them to eat, is only in the first, I would say, month or two when you're really trying to, some of them just kind of struggle to eat. But now that she's kind of got some size to her, she's really she's really she's a really neat snake and <laughs> just look at her head she's so cute and actually a whole bunch of people actually picked up this snake and held her and I thought for sure she would sell but she didn't and it's I, I don't know about the dark on the sides you know I was thinking maybe she, she would maybe start a new line of darker bamboo but all these came from my male which is really light high contrast and I think even if you bred this with a normal I, I can almost guarantee you get a whole range of different bamboos light and dark so here's another male pastel bamboo, really good looking snake, and you can see on this one especially, you can see how much the pastel really pulls out the pattern on the side of the snake. I really love the combo between the pastel and the bamboo. It just really brings out the intensity and the patterning, 
in the in the sides and the, it just really makes it pop it's really awesome so here's a snake that will not be at the show it's just not ready yet and this one's been taking tiny little not even mouse hoppers it's so incredibly small this is my very last clutch from last year and it's I have actually have two of them and they've just been so picky just little bitty uh, albinos 100% head pied and as soon as they're ready they will definitely be at the show but um, I'm still having a hard time getting this especially this one it just won't won't eat and won't eat. I'm finally, I, I got it to eat two in a row just this week, which is promising. And I was really struggling with these guys for a long time. And I actually wasn't sure they were going to make it, but it looks like they're going to pull through. It's just going to take them a little bit more, a few more meals to actually be ready for the shows. So here is another albino. This one, I've, I'm not really confident either of bringing it to the show. It's still kind of really stubborn. It's st These guys are still on. On live mouse crawlers and mouse hoppers this one's a little bit better eating a lot better than the other one but um, I'm still gonna wait until maybe the next show to actually sell them both of them are females so stay tuned I'll definitely have them at upcoming shows okay so those are the ball python hatchlings that I will have available for sale at the next reptile show and that is Repticon in Aurora Colorado in just one week hope to see you there and if you've been watching my channel and seeing my daily videos and I actually haven't posted anything in about a week and you're probably Probably wondering why it's because just about a week ago I woke up and I was so sick I couldn't even get out of bed <laughs> and I ended up going to the emergency room they did a bunch of tests they found out I had influenza a which is terrible and they've been giving me Tamiflu and they said luckily at this point I'm feeling better the Tamiflu kicked in I'm not contagious anymore I'm getting my mojo back and I'm ready for the reptile show hope to see you there and I will see you next time